Coming up, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar interviews Kareem Rush right here on Sports Recall. Let's go! What's going on, sports fans? Your host Kareem here, back with Sports Recall. Today, we are going to be going into the house of a good friend of mine, Mr. Kareem Rush. See what he's been up to since his playing days in the NBA. Let's go. What's going on, everybody? We are back here with Sports Recall, your host Kareem. Now, our next guest, the last time I saw him, the Redcoats at Staples Center were trying to shoo me away from him. I don't think they really believed I knew him, but they can't stop me today. We're going to welcome formerly of the NBA and currently of a lot of other projects, Mr. Kareem Rush. Up, Good to see you again, see my you brother. Too, brother. All right. Now, you know, getting started in this interview, Sports Recall, we always take it way back to the take beginning. Tell people out there where you were born. Born and raised in Kansas City, Missouri. I went to the University of Missouri. Okay. And, uh, but hold on, I, I gotta cut you off. You saying Kansas City, Missouri? You know, we were, you know, just talking a little bit about, you know, Kansas City KC athletes. What is it about Kansas City, or, or you would say just the area that, that makes athletes from there a little bit different? I mean, we're the Show Me State. You know, that's okay. our tagline. So, you know, uh, you know, growing up, you know, we had a long list of you know famous athletes to come up, and you know, me and my brother just wanted to be a part of that legacy. And, uh, you know, Kansas City is a great place for you know basketball, you know, as, as well as other sports, but you know, we definitely want to know for the basketball side of things. Okay, so when you're saying the show me state, you know, not so much about the talk, but you, you need it in the statute. Hey, you you need some show. proof. You got to show. Yeah, okay. You got to put up a shut up. Okay. So, like you said, and, you know, for those of you who don't know, your brother, Jerron, known him, you know, starred UCLA, coming up through the basketball ranks. Was he kind of what got you started in the basketball, or it wouldn't have matter what he did? You just knew exactly. that was the direction you wanted to head in. Yeah, you know, as a younger brother, Jerron's, you know, 18 months older than me, so, you know, like any other younger brother, you want to follow what your big brother do. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jerron got to play uh, basketball around eight, um, I was six and a half. And, uh, you know, I fell in love with the game, you know, as he did. And, uh, you know, like I said, as a younger brother, you always want to you know, kind of follow your brother's footsteps. And you know, he began to build some notoriety as far as being a basketball player. And not as follow suit along the way, my younger brother as well. We okay. came five years down the road. Right, definitely, definitely. When did you know growing up, you know, was it uh, immediately junior high, high school, where you start to think, you know what, I'm, I might have, you know, a, f a future with this basketball thing? I mean, I never really thought about it. You know, I just wanted to continue to work because my, because Jerron was so good at an early age. By the time Jerron was in eighth grade, he was no more playing in the country. So I was always Jerron's little brother. So that kind of forced okay. me to kind of work on my game. And I, like I said, I don't want to live in this shadow all my life. Right. So Carried that, that chip on your oh, shoulder. Man, look, it was so big, man. <laughs> it was so good. Everything Jerron did. I mean, Jerron was, you know, I like him to, you know, now that I've been in the league and played with, you know, some great players. I like him, Jerron. Like his talent, talent level was LeBron James, Kobe Bryant. Mm -hmm. and this guy was unbelievable on the court. So, you know, growing up under that, you know, you had no choice but to work hard and, you know, and, and build your own name uh, to kind of stand out from him. So Okay. Well, growing up in Kansas City, sooner or later, you, you get into colleges, coming around, recruiting, taking a look at you. What was uh, the decision process? How, how did you decide that you wanted to stay uh, you know, with Missouri? I mean, up until that senior year, I was set on going to UCLA and, and, and joining my brother. Uh, okay. you know, we wanted to be the new old Banner Brothers. Uh -huh. uh, so that was always a you know, goal of ours you know, growing up. And, uh, but that, that, that final year, my senior year, when I was able to be on my own, and, Experience all the limelight, you know, given only to me. You know, I was like, okay, I don't want, I don't want a ball drop. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go be my own right. man. So you be Jerron's little brother, yeah, yeah. someplace yeah, else. Yeah, you're not, I'm getting older, but I ain't, I ain't trying to live under that again. So, uh, you know, I was looking at a few different colleges. Uh, Quinn Snyder, who recently got the job from Duke, uh, came in. You know, I really enjoyed, you know, what, what he had to say, and you know, ended up going to Missouri, staying home, and you know, it was a great decision on my part. Okay, being a great decision. How early was it into your college career that you knew, you know what, forget all those other colleges, I'm, I made the right decision in becoming a Tiger? Uh, freshman year, freshman year. Uh, I got a chance to play a lot. I got a Big 12 co-freshman the year, so the success, you know, you know, really validated that decision to go there. A lot of guys go to different colleges and don't get a chance to play. Um, you know, close, you know, from the start, gave me an opportunity to go out there and show my talent. And, you know, it, it lasted for about three years I was there, so definitely blessed to, you know, be a Tiger and it definitely helped me get to where I was, you know, as far as the NBA is concerned. Okay, and like you said, having college career, stepping stone to the NBA, obviously, you know, like you said, growing up, you're just trying to follow in your brother's footsteps or whatnot, but now you're in college, you're on your own, you know the NBA's a goal. When did it start to seem like it was within reach? Uh, probably after my, uh, my sophomore year. 
I, I was I was killing it pretty much. So a lot of people were telling me I should I should leave for the draft after my sophomore year, and like mentally I wouldn't even I wouldn't even there. I just enjoy playing. Didn't even, we wouldn't even think about the NBA. But it, it started becoming a reality that summer. And I started really working, of course, you know, towards that ultimate goal. You know, that following year, you know, my junior year. Um, like I said, I knew that was probably going to be my final year. And, uh, just like we were saying, you're having all these people coming to you, telling you you should leave, telling you you should stay. I mean, it's a lot of outside noise. Was that a distraction for you, or do you think it actually helped? I mean, you have a lot of that, but that's when you kind of back, you know, you, you fall back on your family, uh, your coaching staff, your friends to kind of give you the right advice. Because once, you know, the NBA is involved, you know, people obviously see dollar signs. You know, mm -hmm. So you got agents coming around, you got people who, you know, want you for your money start coming around. So, you know, I was able to have a very really core, you know, small circle that, you know, guided me the right way. And, you know, I, I was fortunate not to make any, any bad decision in college. Okay. Then just coming around the whole draft process or draft night, walk us back through that. Oh, please. man, it was a tough one, actually. Because I was pegged to go top 10 at the, at the least, at the latest 14. Mm -hmm. So I was in the green room, took my whole family and friends up to the draft in New York. And, you know, we got there. And, uh, you know, I didn't get picked to 20, so mm -hmm. my brother had a tough time. My brother, Jerron, had a tough time kind of sitting me sit there and wait. And a lot of guys have been through that process when you in the green room had to sit there and wait for your name to be called. So it was a tough process, but, you know, at the end of the day, I was a first-round draft pick, so I was blessed in that regard. Um, I got drafted by Toronto to actually be the Lakers pick, so uh, we was leaving, the, uh, we was leaving uh, the arena, and I was upset. I'm like, man, I, I wanted to go higher. And all of a sudden, my agent called me, like, yo, you got traded to the Lakers. I'm like, okay, the whole guy changed. So we went out. <laughs> Had a good time, <laughs> you know. I was coming right off the three beats, so I was like, I'm walking right into a championship, but yeah. it happened. But uh, as soon as you get one chip off your shoulder, now you got the drafted later chip yeah, put back yeah, on there. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, memorable day, man. So you're talking about instead of going to Toronto, you end up going to the Lakers, and not just the Lakers, but coming off of a championship year. Talking about Shaquille O'Neal, Kobe Bryant, Phil Jackson. Were you excited, saying, you know, you're going into a situation with some potential Hall of Famers, or? Was it intimidating saying, you know, how, how am I going to fit in? How am I going to find my way? I mean, a little bit of both. But as a rookie coming in, you, know, you got an ambitious goal. You want to be a star. You know, I was a star player in Missouri, so I just assumed that nothing was going to change. <laughs> you know, obviously coming in, you know, playing behind Kobe, I wasn't going to see the, the men's like I wanted, you know, coming out. Um, but, again, uh, I learned so much from him. Uh, Phil Jackson, all those other great players, you know, in, in my three years here that you know, is very valuable. Now, just talking about Kobe Bryant, playing behind him but in practice you're going against him every day yeah we hear a lot of stories some of them true some of them maybe not so true anything you can share with us just about you know kobe in practice kobe i go kobe's rack that's what i did i used to, I used to kill kobe <laughs> you know kobe <laughs> no but uh i mean kobe i mean what i learned from him man is preparation and mm -hmm. you know work ethic that's one thing that I'm, i mean that separates him from everybody else that I've, I've come across as far as playing wise uh the guy works his tail off um, in the gym six hours before everybody else working on his footwork, you know, mm -hmm. so he just showed that, you know, what dedication is to your craft and, you know, you know what, what, what comes of it because of that. So, uh, Kobe's a great player, great teammate, you know, a good friend. And just, when you look at your NBA career, you know, you had the opportunity to play for some different teams, played with a lot of great players, against a lot of great players, uh, you know, talking about Clippers, Seattle, uh, Charlotte. What stands out in terms of stories of maybe, um, you know, maybe we'll start with the fan bases mm -hmm. um, in terms of just, you know, the fans that, that really got behind you or got behind the team uh, that you can remember. Well, I mean, obviously, Laker fans all across the country, you know, we, we saw that every game. And then when I got traded from the Lakers to Charlotte, you know, I saw the, the shift and, and how the other, other has been because I went from the finals to an expansion team, you mm -hmm. know, so the fan base wasn't there. You know, it was coming off the, uh, you know, Charlotte, the Hornets just left, so... You know, the community wasn't really behind the team, so it, it was tough, you know, going to Charlotte for those first couple of years, doing expansion years. Um, but you know, all of my experience throughout the league has been, it's been a great one. You know, fans love the game. Uh, you know, everywhere you go, you support it. And uh, like I said, they, they, they die hard basketball fans around. Mm -hmm. What about when you were suiting up for the Clippers? Now you get to see the other half of the of the LA LA rivalry. Yeah, I was here before the Clippers got hot, so, <laughs> so did, and that was back when they were still. The Clippers are old, so uh, it's kind of funny to see the paradigm shift now. Uh, the Lakers are struggling. The Clippers are, you know, you know first and second in the West. Uh, but you know, that's bound to happen. That's good. I mean, you can you can go to Staples and, and kind of show the card to get into either locker room. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, I still got. I went to the game last night. We still have to pull the red coat card. <laughs> so it's still good to uh, be part of family. Now, I'm so. gonna talk to the red coats. Yeah, the red coats still care. We'll get that. We'll get to that later. <laughs>
Um, you know, one thing you definitely wanted to get into, uh, you know, a lot of guys, you being recently retired, you know, sometimes it seems like guys don't know what to do with themselves when they take off the sneakers and, and put the basketball up. But us just talking, you know, you said it seems like you're busier than ever. Yeah. But, you know, talking about music, I'll just say it straight up. There's a lot of athletes talk about <laughs> music. I'm going to own a record label. I'm going to start rapping. But, I mean, it really looks like you're going about it the right way. But, you know, having some legitimate talent on the microphone. Yeah. It, it takes some time. I mean, and obviously, you know, being an athlete, trying to do music, you're going to get that stigma. Oh, man, he got money. He just wants to, you know, do some rapping or anything like that. But I'm actually singing. So, uh, what a lot of people don't know that I was, you know, music is always my first passion. I've always been a singer. I sang in choir in high school. Anybody who really knows me know how much I see and know how important music is to me. So for them to see me doing it is not a big surprise, but for everybody else, obviously, this is something new. And uh, you know, I started this process three years ago when I hurt my knee. Uh, I never really had the time to really focus on music because it, it is something you got to put your time and effort into. So you, you got to work just like you do working in your jump shot. You got to be working with a vocal coach. You got to be working on your stage spread. You got to be working on writing songs and all that stuff. So it, it's a process. So when I was recovering from my ACL, I thought it was a perfect time for me to kind of dive into it. And, uh, dive into it without even knowing anything. I just wanted to kind of see, you know, put some feelings out there and see what people thought of my talent. And, you know, you know, luckily for me, you know, things started to take off for me music-wise. And, you know, I'm still building it right now and I'm looking forward to kind of pushing out my album this year as well as some new, you know, some new material for people here. So. Okay. All right, everybody, Sports Recall again. Sitting here with Kareem Rush. Now is the time where we go out to you guys, all of the fans following us on Twitter. Got some good questions. The first one, uh, very excited to see Somebody from the, the NBA, we got all NBA access reached out. Obviously, you being a veteran and, and being able to be in different cities, they wanted to know who was your favorite team to play for during favorite, your career. Favorite team to play for, hands down, was the Lakers. Okay. Know, from top to bottom, from the organization to the coaching staff to the, to the players, everything, uh, the staff. It was just a great three years experience for me. So, definitely Lakers. That's why I'm still out here. Been out for 10 years. Got it. Sense, so. Got it. Okay. Next question we got from Lakerholics on Twitter. You already talked about, you know, what it was like being around Kobe, but they want to know what was it like being around Shaq and Phil on a daily basis? Shaq was like, uh, everybody loves Shaq. Shaq's like the big brother to the league. So, you know, coming out as a rookie, he took care of me and my man, Janeiro Parga, you know, from the start. So I always remember how kind of... Shout out to JP. Yeah, JP. I saw JP last night, so shout out to Janeiro. Still doing his thing. Uh, so definitely Shaq was... Uh, you know, great big brother type figure, kind of show the ins and outs of being a professional. Along with the other guys like Robert Lloyd, Rick Fox, Derek Fisher, all those guys that I had on, on, on those teams. But, you know, Phil Jackson was, you know, hands down the best coach I've ever played for. Obviously, he's one of the greatest coaches of all time. Mm -hmm. I still see Phil this day up at the Equinox, and he's still the same. So, uh, you know, great memories here, man, for sure. Got it, definitely. And last but not least, uh, taking it down, we got LaShawn down in San Diego who wants to know uh, what are the next steps in your career, you know, just what are you looking at coming up in the um, future? Next steps is continuing to, to push my brand, my overall brand. Like I said, I'm doing a lot of different things for music. I have a fashion line, I have a press tour, uh, I got a line of custom dog tags I got coming out here in the next couple of months. Um, okay, where, where can, where can uh, you know, we find maybe you some find of that, music? Yeah, you'll find all my, um, everything that I, I got going on, on my website, MrRingRush.com. You can find my music and all my all my current projects on there. You can follow me on Twitter, uh, at Kareem Rush, and Instagram at Mr. Rush. So. Got it. I think this is the part where we point, because they, they put it, you know, the superimposed down, and if you're checking for the website. Right there. There Mr. it is. MrRingRush.com. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, definitely, Kareem, man, it's, it's been a pleasure. Been a long time since we were on that summer league bus. Long time, man. Just because you're not playing ball no more doesn't mean we can't be doing something, right? Exactly. <laughs> Always working. Same, bro. All right. Yeah. Sports recall, everybody.